Okay, in a series of these videos, I'm going to go over some paper and ink uh, kind of techniques that you could do in Substance Painter um, to get some interesting results. Um, I have a couple examples here. I'm just going to turn these on and off so you can kind of see uh, what I have going. Uh, so here's just, I'm just going to jump through and show you a couple random pieces of this. Um, so we have this like uh, different types of inks that I've done and I also have these different types of paper so I'll turn off the artist paper and turn on this old paper um, and then I have things like stains and wears and um, I could also I also have things like tearing and um, just the different types of tearing so I'm gonna go ahead and walk through these um, starting with the paper and then uh, come back to the ink second um, just a quick shout out, I want to thank uh, Madeline Husby for the base file. So the original model and a lot of the original textures were hers. Um, I have just took her file and kind of went through and redid some stuff the way I think I would do them. So things like um, this text that she wrote and these drawings, those are her and her teams. The models are her teams. This bookmark is theirs. The leather texture is theirs. And everything else I tried to remake from scratch um, to kind of show off different techniques. Um, so yeah, so first let's go ahead and dive into the paper. All right, so I'm going to start with this kind of old aged paper and when appropriate I'm going to go ahead and make sure I bring up reference. So here I have a couple images that I was using for reference, right? So here I have this kind of close-up of this really really rough um, harsh grain um, uh, paper. Um, I have a lot of these older pictures of stains and wear. Um, I'm not going to go too hard on some of these. You know, it's good to like kind of keep consistent with a certain reference. Um, you know, this one's like way too hard, but I can see there's a lot of cool patterns in that. Um, here I get a general sense of the texture, right? There's a lot of like kind of grain and noise in this one. Um, here I was using this one for that kind of fibrous pattern and also to get a sense of how that rip would work. Here we can kind of see some old paper that's been stained, yellowed, it has big water stains on it. Um, I liked this one a lot because we had this like kind of center and edge fading. So there's like darker values along the edges and then it's lighter in the center. Um, here you can kind of see just more detail, especially seeing how that ink works. Um, and then I have other stains and uh, tearing reference. Um, so I used a lot more than that, but um, I was just kind of working with those for start. Um, and in the interest of time, I'm not going to, you know, redo all these layers by scratch. I'll mostly just walk through them and talk what's inside of them. Okay, so I'm come down here to the paper. I'm going to turn off this adjustment layer at the top, turn off these stains, and we're going to start all the way at the bottom. So I have this old paper right here, um, and I'm going to go through and uh, step up each of these layers one at a time. So the first thing I have is I have my base material. Um, I've set it to this kind of darker neutral color. Um, one thing that can be kind of tricky with paper is um, doing it too bright, right? If you're doing it close to white, um, it's kind of hard to light, and a lot of paper isn't quite white anyways, right? It's a little off-white. If you're going for like, you know, pristine printer paper, right, that's going to be pretty close to white and it's not going to have a lot of texture to it. Um, but if you're going for like an artist paper, like you're painting it or it's old uh, or you're drawing uh, or something like that like you know um, charcoal paper then you might have a bit of tooth and texture and you're usually going to have a darker color. I also gave it a little bit of an average uh, roughness. Um, it's a good idea for your base material to go ahead and have every material attribute. You know I'm not changing the emissiveness or opacity but at least that gives me a base so when I export my textures every single texture map has like color or value at every single pixel. Um, so if I ever have a layer that has alpha on it, um, then it's not going to come out with like a transparent background in that texture channel. If you don't know what I mean, just make sure you just, on your base layer, just turn on all of these material trees. But I'm mostly just worried about the color and roughness. All right, so the first thing I do is add some color variation, right? And again, I'm looking at my reference to see um, a lot of that kind of color breakup. Let me see if I can bring up one of those. Uh, here we go. So um, some of these guys, this one's a bit like more dry. This one has like a lot of wet water stains. Um, so I'm looking through and just kind of pulling some of those elements out. And I'm not going super deep. I can layer this up another a couple times and have some really interesting shapes. Um, but for the most part, this is just changing the color. And I have a mask, which is just this kind of grungy dirt stain. Um, you know, I can blur it or do some levels adjustments if I want to. But for the most part, it's just, you know, kind of adding a little bit of color set to overlay, which is just going to take the color and blend it in with the layer below. If you are interested in blend, uh, 
uh, blend modes, make sure you guys watch that Substance Painter blend modes uh, tutorial because that can be really useful. Okay, um, so let's see. Uh, okay, so going up, I have another layer here, and this is just kind of like a big, broad color like noise, right? So you can see it's just kind of giving a really broad color breakup, which is nice. Again, this one's just doing color and it has this really big um, cloud noise on it with the blur, right? Um, on the mask. So that's just giving me this really big broad hit. And you can also see right here that specularity, you can kind of get that sense that I do have some specularity. It's just very kind of semi rough. All right. So next thing I'm doing, I'm trying to create that like fibrous texture, right? And this really depends. There's like lots of different ways you can make paper. If you can find physical pieces, that's great. If you can find references that are close up, that's awesome too. So I kind of built this up in two different layers, right? So the first one, I kind of built it up here and the material attributes is um, color, roughness, and height. I gave it just a very slight height just to get a little bit of bump on it, right? Um, you don't really need that, but you know, if you're doing like a high close up shot of your um, paper, you know, getting a little bit of light catching and shadow catching can be kind of nice. Um, and it's also kind of got a different roughness. It's slightly rougher in this case. And I'm not going into the roughness channel too much, but I should be blending my roughness mode with my um, load um, roughness channels below it. But uh, we're going to stick to just showing color for now. So I built this up in a couple of layers, right? Um, pretty standard. Uh, so the first thing I did was I started with this kind of fur text uh, pattern. So there's a fur pattern that you can find inside of um, the, the material texture attributes over here in the asset window. Then I, I tend to like, if I come out and look at something that feels a little too perfect, um, you know, I do this a lot where I'll just warp it, right? Just to kind of make it a little uneven, right? Um, you can't tell at first, but it gives it a little distortion distinction to it. Um, warp is great. I love warp. I use it all the time. Same with blur slope. Um, so I'm just changing the source tiling to kind of change how frequent that the noise is that's driving the blur. So you can kind of see it as these like circles. And as I turn the source tiling, those circles get smaller and smaller and smaller. And they're blurring the texture more and more. But I just kind of want a bigger wobble. Um, and you could also, if you don't want it to be quite as harsh of a change, you could up this, the blur right here. So you can get some small shapes, but then um, uh, blur it so it's not having this like really drastic blur effect. And of course the intensity is gonna be how much it distorts. Um, and then if you go up to one, you know, it's, you know, really big intensity and then, you, but you can go increments of like a hundred, right? If you want it really subtle. So I was just doing that. And then um, to combine with that, I used a ratio uh, white noise. Let's go ahead and just set this to normal so we can see what this is. This is just literally a white noise. Um, and then I'm just screening it on top. So we're just going to screen on top. So it just combines with that fiber below. And then I use a levels node to just kind of adjust it as I see fit out here. So here's with that noise on, gives it that kind of grit. And this levels node is just going to change contrast and that balance. Um, you can see this has a lot of color change. You know, I might want, not want to have that much color change, um, but uh, yeah, that's just what I have. So. Um, that's what's going on with the paper. We can make sure we'll check out the height channels. Just set, most of them are just set to linear dodge. I'm not changing the blending mode of the height channel. I'm just changing the actual height value. So that's my first kind of texture pa uh, pass. And then my second texture pass, um, this one was mostly just based on a reference I was looking at, but this one just has like a secondary height to it. And it has a little bit of color staining to it. You know, I colored it a little bit. I could have turned that off. Um, but for the most part, I just have this kind of bigger um, dirt texture. I just grabbed this default dirt 15. I really liked that circular pattern. Um, and then I used to use clouds to give it a little lost and found, right? So it's not just everywhere. So that's my kind of base material. Then um, I added in like these fibers. I started noticing in some of my references of like close up paper, right? Um, you know, some of these really thick papers have fibers in them, right? Um, so I was just kind of getting some of those loose kind of fibers or hairs that were pressed down. Um, it is exactly as you might expect, right? I just have, we'll start here. I just have this grunge scratch generator that again, I pulled from Substance. I layered on another one with a different scale. Uh, then I used le uh, levels to brighten them up because I wasn't getting enough value. And then I just like to warp just to give it like a hairier effect, right? Um, this would be good for scratches, right? But this feels a little bit more hair-like. Um, and so that's just the effect that's having. So that's just a fibers layer. And I'm just setting that color to like a warmer color and multiplying it on top so it's darkening. Um, and I can just pull that up a little bit based on the opacity. I might blur it too, depending on the um, look I'm going for, but I think this is fine. Um, I was talking about that 
reference here that I liked where you have this edge darkening here around there. So I did this right here. Um, we'll go ahead and pull that one up. There we go. Um, and so for this one, this one's a little interesting. Um, I kind of built this up with multiple layers and you can see I do this a lot. So the first thing I did is I made a paint layer and I just used the polygon fill. Uh, and you'll see whenever I do something like this where I want to select those polygons, uh, so depending on how I lay out my UVs, and Madeline had you laid out your UVs really easily, uh, I just came in here with that polygon fill and I was just kind of doing this, right? I was just kind of trying to get the edge of this paper um, so that I could start with that. I just wanted to start with the edge of the paper. I kind of wanted to somehow highlight that so I can spread from all these edges. There's other ways you could do this, but this is just the way I kind of did it. Um, and so we'll come back out to the 3D only view. Um, and so then what I did was use a bevel node. So the nice thing about a bevel node is it's gonna take like your shape and it's gonna spread it out. And it does it in like a linear gradient, right? So you can see it's spreading out and almost kind of, it's kind of like it's blurring, but it's just doing this like linear gradient spread away from um, the white into the black shape, depending on the distance, right? And you can do inverse and it'd go from the white, uh, it'd go inverse from the dark to the light. And so that's just gonna give me that spread in there. Um, then I just kind of broke up the shape a bit so it's a little bit more organic using just a cloud set to multiply. All right, if I just set it to normal, this is what it'd look like. It has a lower opacity, but I'm just gonna multiply it so it's um, eating away. Uh, and then as always, I like to do a warp. You can see I'm really pushing the warp. So you're, you start to get artifacting when you push the warp too much, but I kind of wanted to push it really hard. Um, and then I blurred it. The blurring it kind of gets away of get rid of, gets rid of those lines, and then just to give it like a bit of more of a paper texture, I just use like a directional noise set to multiply. If I turn this to normal, this is what it looks like, and I'm just multiplying it. Something that's great about these nodes when you do a fill node and put in a texture map in here, um, using this balance and contrast to really pull out the shapes you really want. So in this case, I kind of wanted to eat away at this right here. So let's set this, actually set this all the way to 100. I want to eat away at the these patterns, so I set it to multiply. And so if I bring this lower, right, I'm getting less dark values. So if I set it here, right, if I bring this balance, it's gonna kind of favor the lighter values. And if I pull it to the right, it's gonna favor the darker values. Um, and then contrast is just gonna increase the sharpness or contrast between those patterns. Um, so that's just kind of how I'm dialing that in. And it, you know, I usually use a blend mode to figure out, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna eat away with this some, with some black fiber patterns. You know, I might increase the um, tiling a little bit or maybe even use a different texture map, right? Cause this one uh, kind of sucks a little bit um, or start stretching it a different way. But uh, yeah, and then I just, you know, kind of dialing this back a little bit and then I use that balance node to kind of control that. And you know, I like to look at it out here. Um, so I might actually kind of be a little bit more aggressive with that because I kind of like that, right? Cool. So that's kind of the basis of this um, uh, old paper, right? It's a lot of just layering pieces up. I was looking at a lot of different references, pulling different elements to it. Something that's kind of like a little kind of uh, overlooked or not seen easily is the roughness breakup, right? Um, I like to have that that um, uh, any of those fibers or paper texture to kind of change the roughness. Maybe that's too much. So if I looked at the base color, here's the base color, and then here's the roughness channel. You can see that those patterns and textures are starting to break up the roughness. Um, and then up at the top, I'm going to come up here to my um, color levels adjustment, and we'll come back to this later. Um, but I was just doing this for this layer right here. So this is a paint layer. It has nothing in it, so I just created a paint layer, with like paint layer right there. And then um, to make it adjust all the layers below it, I just set it to pass through, depending on what I wanted to adjust, right? If I wanted to adjust the roughness, I would set this to pass through. So you can see this one's already set to pass through on roughness as well. So pass through just means that this layer is just gonna affect all the layers below it. And so then you can drop on filters and levels nodes on that, and it's gonna affect all the information below. Let's delete this one. So that's what I did. And so here, you know, first thing I did was I set a left roughness or a levels node to adjust the leftness, the roughness levels. Whew. Um, so you see, I just added a levels node and then I just set it to affect the roughness channel. Um, and then I was just adjusting the, the values, right? I was controlling the max and min, right? If it's too dark, it can get too shiny. If it's too white, it gets, it feels just overall too rough and has no roughness. Um, so I just wanted a little bit of something. So it's semi glossy, um, so it picks up light. And then I did a uh, levels node that's just affecting the color. You know, I kind of wanted to just brighten it up a little bit, right? So I could probably brighten it up more if I wanted to. Um, I used a color balance node and this one I actually probably, oh, I think this one does do something. I think it's just loading it. There you go. All right, so I use this color no, uh, balance node just to kind of tense the yellow. So this is just a filter. I just added a filter, made sure it was affecting just the color. 
and I just you know went to the highlights and pushed it a little bit more into like a yellow tone. Um, so if I pull that back, oh, mid-tone, sorry. If I pull that back, you can see that it's less yellow and I can make it more blue if I wanted to, All right? So I was just looking at one of my references and it had a very yellow look to it. And then this is another one that uh, you could always do, which is sharpen, right? So sharpen, ooh, that's too sharp, but um, sharpen is essentially just going to, you know, enhance your detail. So if through painting and layering up a, bu oh, layering up a bunch of stuff, you feel like the, d the detail starts to get lost, um, you could use a sharpen node. Um, but, you know, the one thing about adjustment layers like this is, especially when you have filters on them, they tend to cost a lot, right? They tend to get pretty expensive. So that's just my base old paper. So we'll move on to the next paper. I'm going to turn off these right here. All right, let's take a look at this other paper. Oh, before I move on to this, um, I do want to kind of show this one right here. So this is just like a side displacement. So in this case, um, Madeline has this model where it doesn't have a bunch of paper, right? So it's literally just like a block, right? And so in order for us to get that effect of it looking like it has paper, uh, we can kind of do some cool tricks here. Um, you'll have to test this. You can see I'm getting like this model cracking, which I'd have to fix, but you can you would want to test this inside of um, your renderer to see if it's working. But for my sake, like when I'm looking at this far away, it kind of holds up pretty well. Um, so what I did here is this is just you know, I gave it a bit of a color just so each layer has a little bit of difference to it. Um, they also have a slight roughness hit, but then most importantly, they have a displacement or height hit. And, you know, when we're doing this kind of big change, um, we want to make sure we have displacement turned on. So you can see in here, I've enabled displacement um, and I've just set the scale a little higher. And, you know, I might want to increase the subdivision if I feel like the, the, the shapes and patterns, and you can see I didn't have the subdivision up, so it gets a little um, pixelated here so I probably should have fixed that earlier um, but you can see um, now I have that kind of like displacement the, the forms are actually moving so um, that's something that's really really helpful for um, and I'm also another thing I'm doing is I'm turning on temporal anti-aliasing just if to get rid of all those alias lines that I'm starting to get so in this one right you can see this here um, I have just this uh, I first I did was again I was just like masking out um, this area right here using that polygon fill Right, so I just used a paint layer in this mask, filled that in with white, and then I multiplied on top of it an anisotropic noise, right? So anisotropic noise that I'm like stretching, right? So you can see I'm stretching this so it get more papers, right? If I do the X, if I bring that down, you can see they're kind of starting to show up like that. So I just stretched them out a lot like that. But now they all have a slightly different value, right? Which means that they're all gonna be displaced slightly differently, right? So if I come out here, and just, you know, if I increase that, it's going to give it the illusion that there's more paper, right? Or more pages. And then the last thing I did, and you can see something that's kind of breaking that illusion is like how those fibers go across. So that's something I'd have to clean up. And then just to kind of rough it up a bit, I just added on a warp node, right? Um, just to kind of, and again, we'll flick with that mask by pressing Alt and click on that. You can see it just wiggles it. Um, and you can see how big of a difference that has when we're out here with that displacement, right? So perfect. And then a little bit rough. So cool. Um, and if I wanted to, right, if I wanted to feel like the, the leaves were maybe loose and so one corner was coming out more than the other, I could have come down to the anisotropic noise and maybe dialed um, the X down, right? So you can see now it's kind of wobbling more in the, uh, more frequent, frequently, um, instead of each page having just one uniform distance that's pushing out. So that's just kind of what I was doing right there. Okay, so let's go back here. Um, so before I, let's go ahead and move on to the next uh, type of paper, uh, and then we'll come back to that. Um, these tears right here. So um, uh, that was my old paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my artist paper. So my artist paper, um, what I have here is I have uh, a lot of changes. Um, so first uh, we're gonna go into um, the paper folder here, and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I turn these off. And I'm gonna name this, I didn't name this, emboss. All right, so I'm just gonna turn each of these layers off. Um, and I just built it up very much the same way with a lot less color information, right? So I have this base color, it's a little lighter, less saturated. Um, I added a little bit of color variation, right? Still using that big cloudy one, um, but I just changed the opacity down. Um, and so for this paper texture, this one's a little complicated and I probably won't go super into it. You can pull in a pattern, but I was looking at like watercolor paper. So this I've kind of wanted to have like a bigger grit, like a watercolor paper. And so if you come and look at this, this is a little complicated, but first thing I did was I just made a, a weave. I used a pattern that exists in here and just pulled that in and just tiled it. Then I used a levels node just to kind of adjust it. And that was coming back and adjusting that after I 
pushed everything together. Then, you know, I use a little warp node to kind of make it look imperfect. Then I added another weave going the other way, set to screen mode, right? And so if I just set this to a normal blending mode, right, you'll see it's just it's just going the different way, a different way. But if I set it to screen, it's going to interact and combine with the layer below where the lighter values are going to add on. And then I'd give it another warp. And then I'd give it a little lost and found with a clouds node set to multiply. And so there you go. That's my that's the layers together. So here's that weave. Here's with the levels. Here's with that warp. Um, here's the other weave going the other way. Here's uh, a warp again, and then using the clouds, and that's very subtle, but in some areas it gets a little smoother, in some areas it gets more sharp. Okay, um, then I did another kind of fiber texture on this one. So this one's very similar to the other one. I just, in this case, use this, this node or this texture called messy fibers, and then I just use this uh, lighten mode in this case. I could have just done screen, but then I added this kind of like fur, that fur pattern again, just to make it a little irregular. And then again, I just warped it up so it's a little less frequent or regular. It's a little gritty, right? I could probably pull this back, but you know, I'll just leave it on here just to enhance the detail. And yeah, that's pretty much what's going on with that guy. Um, and I think because I my displacement, you can see that, my displacement was, this feels a lot crunchier than it was before. And I think that's because my displacement um, tessellation was so low. So in this case, I would come in and probably dial this in a lot less. Um, let's go ahead and just We'll bring uh, the scale up, so we'll just bring it up so there's they're like larger, and maybe use less of that warp, and maybe less of that fur, um, and then bring that. Oh, we'll keep the fur and warp on, but maybe I'll just bring that height down. I think I probably pushed the height too much. There we go. All right, and I'm not worrying about the sides right now. I just want to worry about this base paper texture. So that's looking pretty good to me. Um, and then so a couple things I did here is I did this kind of folding effect because I noticed in some of Oh, and you can see this one again. I'm pushing it a little too too far. Um, oops, let's go back to folds. Um, pushing that in a little bit too much. Um, but here, I, and I might turn off the fibers just to see this better. Um, so this folds. Um, it's this one's definitely a tricky setup that I did. So I just pushed it in a little bit, right? So it's kind of crink like someone like kind of creased it, or it might have folded at one point. So the way I did this one is I set up a paint layer. So I just literally was painting um, white and black with a paintbrush. Uh, I blurred it, and then I used a levels adjustment, and actually in this case, I guess the levels adjustment's not doing anything, so I didn't use levels adjustment. And then I used the blur slope. So I love the blur slope. The blur slope node's a really weird node, and I'm gonna show more of it, but uh, let's go ahead and turn this, I'll try to recreate that. So if I turn on that blur slope, so what blur slope does is a lot like the warp node, but instead of pushing the pixels, it just blurs the pixels um, where that noise input comes in. So you know, if I change these intensities, right, it's going to kind of blur more in a particular direction. Um, and then under source parameters, this is what we're feeding into it, which is a default noise. So same thing with the warp, right? If I bring the source tiling down, you know, those those uh, um, uh, noise shapes are bigger, so that um, blurring effect happens in bigger patterns. Um, if we use blur, right, it's going to kind of round out those shapes, so it kind of gives it a softer look. And I can just increase that. Um, and so the more I do that, you can see the more it's going to kind of give you these sharp edges where they didn't exist before, right? Um, so that gave me, right, if I come out here, you can barely see the height in there. But as soon as I turn that um, blur slope on, you can see now it's really kind of giving that like sharp fold. Um, and yeah, so I've just, I could maybe turn that source tiling up. You can see now it's getting a little too crunchy. So I might pull back the intensity of that a little bit and maybe change the blur up. So yeah, uh, that was just kind of how I did those fold effects. I'm gonna control these back. It's a little tricky to handle that one, um, but when you can, you know, when knowing how to use that blur slope, it can be really fun. And uh, the cool thing is I can come in here and I can uh, paint with the paint brush, right? If I just paint um, white, you can see, I can kind of like paint in a new um, fold shape, right? And then I can just go ahead and just use black to kind of pull it back again. So I get this like really cool fold shape. Um, which is really nice. So I was just literally painting here and um, erasing. And you can see that blur and that blur slope are changing the shapes of that. So that's the folds. And then because this is water uh, color paper, I usually there's like an embossment at the corner for like the um, um, company. So this one's very simple. It's really just um, a negative height. And you can see in here, um, I just have this, you know, text I brought in from um, the, the asset browser. 
So just to change the shape up a bit and shrink it, I did a blur and then a levels node to shrink it down. I beveled it just to kind of push it back out and, and then blurred it just to give it a soft edge. Because if I don't give it a soft edge, it has this really sharp hit. And then just blending that kind of makes it feel like it's soft paper. So that's the watercolor paper. So let's move on to some of the other features for the paper here, and then we'll get to ink. So for this one, I'm bringing back my old paper um, because I kind of did a lot of this stuff for the old paper. So I have this one with like bigger just stains and wear, right? So I'm going to add this one up uh, and we'll build these up together, right? So we'll take a look at this first one. So this first one's just going to be kind of like a generalized tileable kind of stain pattern. Um, so if we take a look at this, you can see we have these stains, right? And so this is just a pattern that's drawn again from inside here. We just look in here, stain, and that's probably actually going to be in here. So stains, actually, I'm not 100% sure if that was in here. It might have been pulled from somewhere else. Because this was a pattern or a shape that um, uh, um, Madeline had made. So I'm not 100% sure, sure where that came from. Um, but let's see if it shows up anywhere else. Nope. So she probably imported this in, and it was a pattern she found. Um, and so you can see this one's just, um, you, can, you can see she's sharpening it. Probably didn't need to do that. Um, but she's just getting this kind of darker color, increase the roughness, and then just use that pattern and was tallying. So she just imported a pattern. And I'll show you guys how to import patterns in a second. All right, so there's that one. Um, I have. She also has this inner stain. I just cleaned this up a bit, but this was also something she made. Again, just you know, multiplying the color. So it's multiplying and darkening the color, and we're just using this to darken and lighten the color. Here we go. You can see it's getting darker right here. And then, so we're just gonna pull that back to where it's lighter. Wow, it's going really slow. Um, I'll go ahead and close that. Uh, and it's a little rougher, again. Um, setting that multiply with that opacity lower. Uh, if we come in here, you can see this has got a lot of crazy information going on here, but you can see she's just using a mask generator. Um, so it just has, she probably just pulled it from one of these smart masks in here, or made it, she might have made it herself. Um, but you can see it just has um, this moisture noise texture pattern in it, um, and this grungy splashy one. And you can see those textures. We have texture one and texture two, so texture two doesn't have a huge amount of presence, but I can pull that up. Um, and then texture one's just kind of eating away or blending in with the, the curvature. So it's using like ambient occlusion and curvature. So you can see I pull that curvature back. It's just using the baked maps. And then the ambient occlusion, it's kind of building it up right there. So that's just using those baked mesh maps. And we're just pulling that in from a smart mask. Okay. So that's using, she was doing that so she can get like a darker color in the, in the crevice, which is really cool. Um, so here's um, some other ones that I was adding. So this one, I, same idea, we're just multiplying the color. So it darkens, gives a little bit more saturation, increases the roughness. I like having things change the roughness, right? It's very subtle, but it gives a big impact. You know, sometimes also giving a bit of a height change as well can really help. Whoop, not positive, but like a negative one, right? We can push that in. I might smooth that out. You know, that's a little too rough or too sharp. But, you know, if I wanted it to be wet paper that's wrinkling, I could totally do that. But I'm not going to do that. Um, so here, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So this one right here is literally just a map that I pulled in from um, the internet, right? So I, I, I'll, I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, so in here, uh, I have these, this is where I have the images, right? So here's the stains I kind of extracted or made. Um, and here's a, a Photoshop file. So I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, oh, I saved it as a PNG. So I'll show you guys how to make one of those stains with a single image. Let me go ahead and get that set up first. Okay, so I have this image right here. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it into Photoshop. So I'll bring Photoshop over here. And I essentially just wanna make this a mask or alpha that I can use for stamping stuff inside of um, uh, Substance Painter. So in order to do that, uh, I'm just gonna do really basic image adjustments. There's cooler things and a lot of fancy things you can do with this kind of stuff, but I'm gonna keep it pretty basic. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to desaturate this. So I'm gonna to go to Image, Adjustments, uh, color and balance, or sorry, hue and saturation. So I'll just pull that up and we'll just pull the saturation down. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to invert it. So we're going to go to image adjustments, invert. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, and then I'm just going to, because this is kind of like grayscale and there's not perfect black values in the background, I like this to have like goes from white to black, but with a lot of gray values in the middle. So what I do is I'm just going to go in here and add a levels node. And you can see here, right, like that the white values end much sooner than white, and the black values start 
a lot further up than black. So I'm just going to bring the black point close to here. And then I'm going to bring the white point up to here. So then, and you know, the, more, the further down I bring this white point, the less information I have, right? I'm losing a lot of information in there, which can be cool, but if that's not what you want, then, you know. Um, and so, yeah, there we go. So I can get that um, for myself. Uh, so then I could just save this out. One other thing I can show you how to do this. Let's go ahead and save this one out first. So we're going to go ahead and put it in here. We're going to call this one stain one. Just save it as a JPEG or a PNG. Uh, I'm going to control Z this back a couple steps. Okay. Uh, another thing you do is you could do a um, color range. So I could do, um, let's go ahead and image select and we're going to do color range uh, and we can do it with values. I think, um, Let's do uh, midtones, right? So you can isolate and select like parts of it. So it really depends on the image, but if you like certain shapes and you would just extract certain shapes instead of um, extracting the whole image, um, you can do that. If this was like had different colors, right? Like you had like a pink shape and a red shape and a blue shape, you could easily do like a color picker and just isolate those and turn that into a separate mask. So knowing how to do this stuff inside of um, Photoshop can be really handy, right? Um, so this is just showing me that that level that I can um, kind of focus on. Um, and so we can just bring that down a little bit and say, okay. And then what I could do is I'll add a new layer and I'll just do uh, layer fill, uh, or actually I think it might be image, edit fill, sorry, edit fill. I know the hotkeys, white. And then um, down here, we'll just go ahead and do edit fill um, black. Oh, you can see that's like such a small area. So let me do that select one more time. So I'll do select color range. Um, and yeah, let me go ahead and do this to like a medium range. And we'll bring this, we'll make that a little fuzzy. Yeah, there we go. Say okay. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and bring this back up. And then we'll go edit fill whites. Say okay. And we'll bring that black back up. And so you can see I'm like extracting a different pattern or shape. But I'm not going to use that. Um, but that's just some, there's a lot of cool things you can do with Photoshop once you kind of get used to it. So I'm going to go ahead and close Photoshop so we can see that map. And you can see I did that with a couple other images that I found online. I just did that exact same adjustment I had just done. Um, so I'm going to come back in here to Substance Painter. Um, and so that's what I did. I just loaded in and imported the resources. So I will go ahead and add resources. So let's bring that stain in. I'm going to bring it in as an alpha. And I might bring it in as this project if I want to use it multiple times. And I might save and close this and bring it to another area. If I just want to use it this one time and I don't want to store it in this file, I could do just current session. So I'm going to do that. And you'll see stain pulled in here. You see some of the other ones that um, both Substance have and the, some of the ones that I loaded in. Um, so in this case, I might, what I like to do a lot of times for these stains is um, people like to paint and stamp them. I, if, I, if, I, if it's just a pattern, right, like this, I'm just, I just want to translate it here or a text or something like that or one of these guys, I like to do a fill node and then drop this onto the fill node. So at first you can see this is not what we want, um, but if we change this to 3D and 2D view, um, I can come in here and I can change this to not be repeating. I'm gonna set it to none. Um, so now I can just translate and move it in the UV space exactly where I want it, right? So I can pull that up and say we're gonna do that. Um, and then if I come out here, and let's turn off the levels for a second. Um, if I go ahead and um, let's come back out to the material so you can see there it is right there. And then just using that levels node to adjust the values and get the kind of shape I specifically want, right? Um, which gives me a lot of control. So that's kind of the way I like to do, bring in like those kind of hero elements. You know, I find a cool shape or something I really like online, uh, and then I'll just bring it in here. I could just add a, f a paint node in here too. So we're just gonna add a paint node um, or layer, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and then I can come in here with like a black value and then I can like erase parts. And if I wanna build that up really low or slowly, I can just bring the flow down and you can see it's gonna kind of build that up slowly. So let's bring it down to two. And so you can see, I'm gonna kind of like erase that stuff away. So if there's some things like I don't like these shapes, I can just go ahead and erase them. Um, and that's how I can kind of erase the image below, right? Um, so that's just kind of giving me a little bit more control. All right, so that's one of them. Here I get, did another one, but this one's a little bit more custom made. Um, this one's a little funky, uh, so bear with me. So you can see this is pretty long. Um, so here I have another one of my, my um, stamps that I brought in. Um, this one, we'll talk about this paint layer. I'm gonna call this paint me. 
Um, so anytime I want to like make it have a like a layer stack like this, and I really want to do something cool and um, like paint stuff, I usually have a paint layer so I can come back and easily find where I can make adjustments. Um, so I filled in that fill node, and then I just um, anchor pointed it. So I just created an anchor point. It's called stain. And then what I did, I was I wanted to do an edge detect, so I did a, a high pass filter and used a levels node to grab. Um, kind of like the edges, right? Because I wanted to delete and erase a lot of this in, inside part. Um, so then I blurred it a little bit. And then I went ahead and also set an anchor point. And I built this up. I didn't know what I was doing as I was doing it. I was just kind of like adding layers and testing things out to figure it out. So then what I did was up here, um, I brought in that stain blur and then I ate away or multiplied on my original um, layer down here. So right here. So this is a very convoluted way of showing you guys how I could, I took that image um, itself. I did like some image adjustments to it, like I blurred and did it like an edge detect. Um, and then I just use this and I'm filling, bringing it, them in as anchor points, right? So I'm bringing the blurred one and the normal one. And then I'm just multiplying or blending them together to get this like cool shape. And so I made that little paint shape right here so that I can come in and if I wanted to, you know, kind of, you know, give some of these edges like a little bit more of like a, sh a cleaner edge or shape, I could just kind of paint that in if I wanted to, um, paint some of those shapes in. Um, and then that just gave me a little bit of like a paint control. So I know that one's a little bit funkier and kind of, you know, like what just happened. Um, but, you know, uh, hopefully if you guys open this file up, you can go back and dissect it. And hopefully this also shows you like how just knowing how to manipulate anchor points and blend modes and filters can give you some pretty cool effects. Um, and then I might come in here and do like a sharpen node just to kind of sharpen the shape and make it a little bit like punchier and cleaner. Uh, because when I painted and blurred it, you know, I lost a lot of detail. So there's that one. And here's another one I did. And so this one, it, I just did like a couple of tests on this one. Um, and this one's more of like a proof of concept. So if I come in here, uh, we're gonna build this up again. So uh, here I have the stain marks. I just pulled in another image where you can see it's right here. Um, I made an anchor point so I can reference it later. And then I blurred it and then I did a blur slope. So I do a blur slope just to kind of make it organic and wobbly. And then um, I invert it. And then what I did was, cause I wanted to get like this kind of wobbly inside shape. So I had to blur it and then I had to use levels to kind of spread it in there, right? And then what I did is I pulled the original shape and I'm multiplying it back on again to kind of cut that original shape out right there. So if I come out here to the layer and we look at this build up at one one step at a time, right? So here's the, the stain, right? Um, here's blurring it, here's wiggling it, here's inverting it, and then we're cutting back in the original shape. So add that in. So it's just cutting that original outside shape again. And then using levels node again for some correction. Again, I like to do blur slope just to give it like more, if it feels too perfect, warp or blur slope. Um, and then I just multiplied on top an actual shape pattern, right? So you can see this is just this um, this map right here. And I adjust the balance. Um, and then I'm just multiplying it on top. So we're just multiplying on top. So it, it subtracts away. I could have done something a little bit different. So that just gave me a little bit more control. So that's just another way of doing kind of the same thing I did down here, but with just a slightly different approach. But those anchor points, those make it really helpful. All right, so that's the stains. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the tears. And I'm going to turn on a single stain. Um, let's do this one. No, let's do this one. This one's cool. Okay. All right, so let's get to the tears. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go 3D only. The tears, like, this, like some of the stains, can be a little complicated. I'm going to start with a slightly simpler one, which is the um, the uh, crisp one. So for this one, this is uh, these papers are single-sided geometry. You can see that gets a little wonky right there. But these these this first page is just a single-sided plane or geometry, right? Um, so um, if you have a single-sided or really 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 thin geometry, the nice thing about that is you can take advantage of what's called presence. So on my material, you can see I have an opacity. Well, in RenderMan, they call it a presence. And in um, Substance, they call it opacity. So I have this opacity attribute that I added on. Um, we also have an emissive one, but we're not using it anywhere. Um, but in here, for that tear crisp, we're going to go ahead and open this one up. So it's just um, two shapes, right? So um, I have first the um, subtraction, right? So you can see right here. Um, let's turn this off first. So this is the subtraction. So you can see 
It's a little hard to notice, but I'm like actually making that invisible, this top layer. So this, this top model is actually disappearing. And if I come and look at this, right, it just has these kind of shapes I painted in here. And again, I'll show you this. This is kind of like how I like to do these like organic, cool shapes. Um, so what I'm going to do is come up here to fill. I just filled it with black. Then I have this like paint layer and then I have this other paint layer. So this, this other paint layer, if I turn it on normal, uh, let's turn it on. It's just masking out the other layers. So I just did a polygon fill or, uh, you know, using the polygon fill tool just so I'm only affecting the, the, the top page. And so I'm just multiplying that on top with the layer below, right? So that when I paint, I'm not going to accidentally paint transparency on the other layers, right? So if you can see that, like I'm erasing all those pages behind it, um, but I only want to affect the top page. Okay. Um, and if we come back in here, and I just did like a levels node so that I can get sharp edges, right? I don't want like slightly blurry edges because that looks kind of weird, right? So um, levels just gives me sharp crisp edges. And then I did a warp to make it like those shapes a little bit more organic. So if I come back in here, that warp gives me some cool funky shapes going on. So same idea as usual, just using that warp to kind of distort the shapes. I don't want those floating shapes, so I wanted to be careful uh, because at least out here, if I had a little floating shape that look, might look like fake or weird. Um, so just enough to give it like a weird, cool funk. And then I anchor pointed it. So um, this layer right here is just set to opacity zero, right? So I'm just hiding um, everywhere that I have that mask at. Cool. And so here's the displacement. So that just gives it a little bit, makes it a little bit more visible and interesting. And it also gives it like a raised lip. So on this one, um, the tear enhance, I have it affecting um, base color, height, and roughness. That's usually the things I do for that. So if we turn off color, right, the color is just like a kind of like a color edge enhance, right? So it just makes it a little bit more noticeable, right? The height obviously is going to be kind of like this um, kind of raising of the lip, right? Push it too far, uh, but you can see I kind of pulled it up to here. And then of course, I'm just giving it like a bit of roughness that, you know, with everything else tends to make it a little bit more believable. So I'm going to come in here um, and I also have this really cool one right here that just gives it like this kind of really roughed up pattern. Um, it's just another warp that I added, but I can go ahead and just bring that. Um, let me go do this really quickly. Um, so I'm going to bring that pattern up here and we can maybe increase that a lot. And I think I did this also with a blur slope too, which is always my favorite node to, or filter to try to goof around with because it always gives really interesting uh, results. Um, uh, but not always what you want, but let's go ahead and increase that uh, shape. Let's go ahead and bring the blur down, All right? So that could give me some, I don't know, it gives me something. Uh, let's turn off that. So we'll come back in here. And so on this case, what I did was um, I just brought in that anchor point. So I referenced the opacity um, uh, layers mask, right? So I just grabbed that anchor point tear mask and I put it in here, put it in this fill, fill layer. And then I blurred it. So I can kind of creep this back away from the edge. So if you look at this, right, um, if you turn this off, right, it's just kind of creeping it away from the edge um, and just lifting it up off the edge. Then I added a warp to give it uh, less of a perfect edge, but we can turn that off for a second. Um, and then I just fit, used a fill to um, uh, cut back out. So if we look at this right here, right, um, without that fill, we have this kind of soft edge. Um, if we kind of look at up here, oh, come on. Where am I? There we go. I'm zooming in too much. Um, so if we come back out here, right, you can see that's giving a really soft lip. But by then having that fill cut in, I kind of get a little bit of a lip going this way in that direction, which gives it a little bit of a light catch, which is nice, right? Um, like that paper is thick or something like that. So that's kind of nice. And then that warp just gives it a little bit of an organic kind of play to it, right? So it's not perfect, right? So warp it. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of how I did that. And again, um, kind of like how I so I did before, I come down to this paint me layer and then I can just paint in here and I can paint in new um, tears, right? It's gonna go a little slow because I'm doing this across multiple layers, um, but you can see I'm kind of creating, this is like one of the most fun things to do in my opinion, but I'm like actually creating this kind of tear in real time and I can, you know, come back in and you know, really change that shape up. Um, uh, and then, you know, maybe I want to kind of um, tear this edge right here or tear a bit of a corner, right? So that gives me all kinds of really cool tricks. And we can change the shape in a lot of different ways, right? Like if I want it to be a really sharp 
um, cuts, then what I can do is let's go ahead and make this flow um, happen a lot faster. So I can do that, and maybe I, I might not warp it so much, but you can see now it feels a little bit like a sharper cut. Um, so yeah, so knowing how to do this, right, I'm doing that presence cut, and then I'm using this layer to kind of raise the edges and color them. Uh, can give you a really cool effect. And this is the same principle as if you had done a peeling paint tutorial before. It's the same kind of concept. All right, I'm going to go ahead and look at this rougher tear. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that one, and we're going to turn this one. So this one was something that I liked where it's like something like almost like cardboard or construction paper where like a top layer pulls off. Like it has several layers stacked on each other, and you can see like that top layer pulls off. Same idea with like a sticker, right? Like that vinyl part might pull off and leave behind a thinner, hairier paper part right here. But it's very much a similar kind of idea as the crisp one, just using slightly different um, methods. So we're going to come down here and we're going to build this up slowly. So first we're going to do the rough tear and that's doing that same idea where we're doing, um, I'm just, in this case I'm doing this with a displacement instead of it being the uh, presence. So you can see I'm just displacing this down and changing the roughness. If I took a look at this, right? You might recognize these shapes, that's a uh, blur slope. So here, we're, you can see I have a lot of layers on here. Um, so here I just kind of did again like a edge fill, which I actually really didn't need. I don't know why I did that. Um, honestly, I probably didn't need that at all. Um, I, I was trying something else at first. So I was just doing this paint effect and then, um, you know, blurring that out. So, you know, they kind of merge together, um, using a levels node to clamp it a bit and then using two blur slopes to kind of really change the shapes of that, right? Um, so that gave me here, right? Let's go ahead and we'll turn on color for a second just so we can see what that looks like. So let's see, I'll set this to white um, and then we'll set the color higher just so we can see the effect it's having. Um, so here I just, you know, kind of pulling those up, right? Levels node, blur slope to get some interesting kind of sharp tear shapes. Um, making smaller tear shapes so it gets these really imperfect edges. Um, you know, I'm masking out the other edges or other papers so they're not going to be affected by it. Um, here's that level, it's just giving me more control of that fall off, right? Um, so if I bring that levels node down here, let's go and, you know, sh give it a harsher fall off. You can see that. Um, cool. And so I'm going to control Z that back a little bit. So I did that for the color or for the, the displacement. And so I'm going to turn off color because I was just doing for displacement. Um, and then I did the alpha cutout. So that's just going to essentially going to go ahead and um, cut out along the edge of that. So it's the same kind of concept. Let's go ahead and see that um, opacity channel, right? So we're just hiding the top page um, where that is. And so that's just going in here. I just brought in the anchor point. You can see here. Um, what I did though is I brought in the, the um, anchor point from the rough tear pattern that I made. I used the levels node to like really give it a sharp fall off. Again, did a, like a hairy warp, a little bit of a blur slope so that I can you know change the shape up a bit. Okay, come back out here. So that's just kind of actually cutting away the front the top page. And if we turn off this one, right, you can see it's just cutting away. And then we have that displacement. And then I used color to kind of break up that that um, those middle layers or those bottom layers. So this is just a color breakup that I did. So you can see it's just affecting color. Um, and so it's just doing this where I'm again bringing in um, that anchor point. So I'm just bringing that um, mask. I'm using levels adjustment to can kind of control where I want this to happen. Um, I'm using directional noise to get like a papery pattern and then using this as well to kind of break it up a bit. Um, and then again, we have, we're masking off the other pages, but in this case, I don't even need that one, to be honest. Um, so if I come back out here, if I take a look at those layers built up, right? So here's that fill layer, right? That, um, grab again, that kind of blur, or that blur sloped pattern I had painted, um, use levels to control where I want the, that under layer paper texture to be. We just kind of give it a little bit of a texture to it using those and voila, we have this kind of. Uh, effect and again just like the layer below and you see I have these paint me kind of shapes here um, Or patterns here so I can come in here and I can go ahead and um, you know if I want that tear to be um, Bigger and rougher right let's just go ahead and do like a really big um, Paint shape here so if I just want to go ahead and like tear away like half this page uh, You don't want to leave any floating parts because that might be kind of weird um, But let's see what this does so here we go 
right? So I just like essentially tear, tore away half the top page. Um, so yeah, so again, using a lot of adjustment layers, using those anchor points, you'll notice I separate like my, um, my displacements, my color and my presence out in different layers. Um, I like to do that just because, you know, if I'm trying to do presence, color and displacement at the same time, right? If I cut the alpha, right, using the same mask as um, how I'm doing the color and displacement, um, then, you know, all these would be like slightly transparent. So um, I want those to be all opaque and have a different color, but I also want this like to kind of bleed in. Cool. So that is my uh, rough tear. Um, so that's all for the paper. Now we'll go ahead and move on to the staining. Okay, so we're going to go into the staining or actually the inks. That's kind of what I should actually refer to it. Um, so we're going to come up here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually probably turn off those um, tears for now. Um, and I have three different examples I'm going to show. So um, I'll start with probably the easiest one, which is ink, right? Um, it, like a pen. And this one I was doing it on the um, rough watercolor paper. Um, so actually, let me go ahead and bring the wa uh, rough watercolor paper back. Um, so I was kind of targeting it towards that one. And let's get rid of those stains. Okay, cool. All right, so on this one, I wanted to feel like a ballpoint pen. I actually have a couple of versions of these, right? So the main idea here, though, is I just have a paint layer um, that, you know, this paint layer has nothing in it, right? If I hit it, it's not doing anything. And I just wanted to have a text that I brought in. So you can see um, I brought in text that I made in Photoshop. So I just made um, this pattern, uh, this pattern in Photoshop just by downloading a font. Um, typing it out and then cropping and inverting it. So white is going to be showing, black is going to be hiding. Um, I did the same thing with this over here, right? I, did, I wanted to do like this uh, illuminated manuscript. I just didn't get around to it. Um, but you know, you can get some cool stuff uh, if you look online. Um, so I just wrote like a little uh, message, um, like this is like a ghost journal. I don't know. Um, so I brought that in. Um, I did a little bit of blur and then like a levels adjustment because I just wanted it to be a little thicker. And then, as always, I made an anchor point so I can reference this later. So here's my, uh, I'll start with the, um, uh, let's see, not the displacement, we'll start with the color. So I just have this ink, right? And so I, the color I set to like a dark blue and I'm set to multiply. Um, oh, there seems to be, a, oh, I have this breakup, I'll get rid of that. Um, you know, just for the mask, it's literally just what this is down here, right? Um, and so, and then uh, I also am doing roughness, but I'm doing roughness up with the height as well. Um, but I could do roughness and I could set this to like glossy, right? And you'll see when that moves across, it kind of feels wet, right? It doesn't make sense for dried ink, but you know, if you're going for wet ink, which I'm gonna show in a second, um, that could be really cool. So that's just what I'm doing right there. Um, and so I have a couple versions of this. So first I'm gonna do the pin depressed soft, right? So this one right here, I'm just essentially taking the, here we'll show right here, I'm taking that um, anchor point from down here, bring it up here, um, and then I'm beveling it to like spread it out further, and then I'm blurring it so it gets a soft rise. So if I come out here and look at this, right, it just has this really hard kind of cut in, right? So right, it just cuts in really sharp, you can see the sharp edges. Um, by adding a bevel, it kind of spreads out of it, but still feels a little sharp. Actually, it feels pretty good. You could probably just go, get away with just the bevel, right? You can see it has like a softer pilling effect. Like this is soft paper that you're pressing your your pin, your ballpoint pin into. Like I really was pressing into it. Um, but then I did like a little bit of blur to soften it. And I there's something here where I probably have to just fix some of the displacement. Um, but for the most part, you know, right? That's just giving me that catch, right? And this has a slightly glossy texture. So you can see I'm also setting it to have a slightly glossier texture. Right, um, so it's different than the paper. If I look at the roughness channel, right, you can see it's slightly different, but um, not too too much because I want it to feel a little like dried uh, ink. So that's um, for like you know this really big soft uh, pen. If I wanted to feel like a scribe pen though, I have this one right right, right here where I did a really sharp depression, uh, and you can see here um, I'm getting a bit of an issue, probably pressing it down too much. Let's see. Um, yeah, I'm probably just pressing too much and it's interfering with the layer below. Um, so all my displacements on top of each other, I think they're just kind of getting into each other too much. In this case, you can see that it has like a sharper edge to it, right? Like almost like a sharp nib was kind of cutting into it. And these are really subtle changes, right? But you know, that helps, you know, it's a different change from this to this, right? This fe feels big and soft. This feels sharp and cut in, right? 
Um, and you feel those really when you see the specular change and you see the, the um, uh, light change, right? And then I can make it a little um, less rough and then it gets a little glossier. Okay. Um, and this one's just doing, um, I'm doing a bevel again, right? But in this case, I'm doing an inverse bevel. I'm doing a negative bevel, right? So it's kind of shrinking into the shape. Uh, and then I'm doing a levels adjustment to kind of like only have it affect certain areas, right? But if I come back out here, right? If I do, we'll turn this off. And then if I do this levels, um, maybe we just pull that levels up a bit. You can, you can start to see it kind of show up in the specularity. Cool. All right, and then the last one I have is this raised ink, right? And so this would be, let's go ahead and turn off some of that height on the paper. I think that paper is kind of getting on our nerves. Uh, let's do that, turn off the artist paper. We'll just turn on um, this um, normal paper, or this old paper, and we can look at that here. Um, and I could increase the subdivisions. Um, you know, this, this can be really slow on your computer, uh, slow your computer down so you can see if I increase the subdivisions. Right. It's getting a little wobbly, but that's going to make that displacement act a little bit better. Um, uh, but I'd like to pre preview my displacement. So in here, we have this um, raised ink, right? So if I do that, right, it feels like it's like fresh ink that's like spilled up on the surface, right? Um, they're not, uh, it's like still waiting to dry. Um, so it's like kind of raised, like you use too much ink on a, a quill um, or on a pen. Um, and so uh, in here, this one, I'm just, I gave it like a shinier look, right? Um, I gave it a positive height in this case, right? As opposed to a negative height, right? Um, and so, yeah, so this gives me like, almost like it's freshly written. So that's something, you know, having some kind of control over that and thinking about how that, what, what the status of this text is or how the art's made um, can be, just adds little subtle effects that can be really cool. So that's my um, pen ink. Let's go ahead and go to the next ink um, effects. All right, so for the next one is gonna be this ink brush. So this one that I use, these are images that um, Madeline made and I just made a couple versions of this. Um, you can see if I look at this, it's just masked to these pages. So that's what that folder mask is. Um, and if I come in here to, oh, not the paper, let's go into the ink. Okay, you see there's just a couple uh, layers in here, so we're gonna build these up slowly. Um, so the first layer we have is we have this breakup pattern. So um, we had separated this out into like a texture. Madeline had set this one up. So she just wanted to reference this multiple places. So she just made this kind of cool breakup pattern. So this is just a paint layer again, which is has like literally nothing in it. And we also have our ink layer. Um, so this one should just be called ingredient or ink layer, but that's okay. Um, so here, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this. Um, and this one, again, I'm using a lot of like blend modes to really kind of change things. So she brought in like a scan of something they had drawn. So they had drawn it, they scanned it, and then they brought it in. So it was really cool. Um, so, you know, she stamped it in this case. I probably wouldn't have stamped it, but I'm just working with what she had. Um, and so she brought this in. I translated it up into a position. Um, she also had another stamped layer and a paint layer with this kind of um, uh, leaf and I could go in here and erase that stuff, but I don't care that much. And then we also have the title and this like little kind of extra uh, text down here. Um, so we're just screening these, or um, actually they're set to normal one. I could just set them to screen though. And so they're just stamped all together. So they're just assembled inside of um, Substance Painter. I use a levels node to get rid of kind of like some of the background um, blending uh, issues, right? Uh, and she also had this like small uh, details that she added inside with some of these stamps inside of um, uh, Substance Painter. So she just found some cool stamps. So you see she got these like cool drip effects here, a little splatter at the end, like the the, pinning, uh, the nib at the end kind of like scratched and sprayed a little bit of um, ink. Um, and so then I created an anchor point here. So I'm just referencing this one. And then I wanted a rougher version of it. So this is the clean version. Um, and I'm imagining this is like painted with like a brush, right, instead of a pen. Um, and so what I did was I did a warp, right? And so I just did a warp with a really small um, source tiling. So I scaled this up, right? Um, so that I can get this kind of fizzy, kind of rough, scratchy text um, shape, right? Like as if like it's kind of bleeding irregularly into the paint or into the paper. Um, and I also changed, I was playing around with the balance, right? Cause I didn't want it everywhere, right? So I just brought the balance in. So it's only coming in in certain areas, okay? Um, and you can see I'm also blurring it a little bit. 
So in this case, I'm also using a multi-directional blur a warp uh, as opposed to a warp. That's just a different version. You can play around with it. Uh, the warp and blur slope, you just have to play around with it a lot just to kind of get a sense of what the parameters do. So that just gives me like a, a rougher version. And then I added in that break that breakup um, layer that she made down here just to kind of like eat away into this. And then I called this one dirty ink. So I just added in an anchor point. So then up here, right, we have our ink layer. So my ink layer just has the normal clean ink. So clean ink, and I'm just, you know, adding this breakup so it's less regular. Okay. Uh, and then what I did was I added dirty ink. So if I turn off this other link ink layer, it's the dirty layer um, just spread out a little bit, right? So I just blurred it slightly, um, and then I'm just doing that. And it has like a smaller, um, a uh, smaller, uh, a lower trans transparency. So if I add those on top of each other, it's just multiplying on top of it, right? If I come in here and maybe increase the blur a little bit, right? Um, you can see it's kind of gets this like fuzzier look. Actually, I kind of like that. Um, the more it kind of spreads out, the more it kind of feels like a, it's bleeding a little bit. Um, but I kind of liked the kind of the, the scratchy shapes that come away from that layer, right? That one right there. I like that kind of bleeding effect. And then I actually did this enhanced bleeding effect, again, using blur slope, right? So this layer, I was really wanted to feel like um, like there's a couple marks where there's like too much water or too much ink and it just kind of spread out in some areas. So in this case, um, what I have is I kind of have right here, I'm just bringing in that dirty ink. I'm using a blur slope and I've really cranked it. You can see I really cranked the values um, here, right? So I just really spread that out. Um, and again, I use that balance or position in this case to control how much of the uh, uh, the text is being affected by it. So I just dialed that in. Um, then I did, added a little blur, so I didn't want those really sharp edges coming from it. Um, I had some areas where I didn't want it to happen, so I just was cleaning it up in some areas with this paint layer, so I was just darkening it. And then I just kind of ate away at that to make it feel like it's the paper has like a texture to it. All right, so here's that, just the Gaussian spots, right? You can see in here. My gosh, and spots just give it a little bit more texture to it. And so if I come in here to that blur slope, if I change the the uh, uh, position, you can see this is a really cool effect, right? Like it almost spreads out, right? And it's just like interacting with the layer, uh, the layers below it, right? So um, without these other layers, right? If I come and hide these, right? Um, if I do that blur slope, it's going to get kind of wild. But it's just it's just interacting with these layers below, right? We got the dirty ink. Um, and then we have the uh, sharp ink. And so this is just like my bleeding ink. And so that's, I love doing this kind of stuff, like being able to um, kind of control these values in these settings. And if we can animate it, that'd be even cooler, right? Like you can see this like kind of spreading ink out, right? You can see it like animates like that. So using levels adjustments, using filters with these settings, that's essentially what position and contrast is. It's doing a levels adjustment on this noise that's feeding the blur slope. Um, and yeah, so that's just what's happening with this one. And then I also have this one right here. This one's the most complicated. I'm not going to dive too much in it because it's kind of needlessly complicated. There's probably easier ways to do this, but I kind of wanted a, a thing that felt a little bit like maybe like paint, like acrylic paint a bit. Um, and again, I did this one on the for the artist paper. Um, again, I'm getting some displacement issues that I wasn't aware of until now. Um, but if I come up here, so this one right here just has like again two layers. I have like a dirty ink and a clean ink effect. Um, and so what I essentially have here is, again, we have that, that breakup layer. It's just got that pattern. Here's my text. In this case, I just wanted to use a text pattern that already existed inside of um, Substance. So I just dragged one of the, the text um, alphas in here called, it just says close. And so I just blurred it and used blur slope to kind of, uh, and I actually I blurred it and used uh, levels to just shrink it, right? So blurring and then clamping it with levels you can like either spread it out and make it fatter, or you can kind of, you know, make it uh, skinnier, right? Um, it does have an effect where it's always gonna round the edges, but you know, I thought that was kinda cool. And then we have this blur slope, right? Cause I just want to wobble it. So warp or blur slope just to make it feel irregular. And so I just made that a anchor point. And so um, I also made a second anchor point cause I want to do some, you can see I went a little far on this one. Um, and this one's, 
I'll admit this one's probably uh, the most complicated setup in here. So in this case, I kind of wanted this like cool fiber texture. If you look at here on this one, you can see it's going in both directions. I kind of wanted to feel like, you know, there's like intercrossing fibers in the paper and the ink was bleeding in those directions. I wish I had more time to dev it because I think I could do better, um, but this is what I ended up with. Um, so uh, we'll come back down here and see how that's made. Um, and so let's go ahead and start with this layer down here. So what I did is I essentially just brought in my text that I brought from here with the anchor point into a fill layer. Um, and I'm doing this directional warp. So I'm doing a multi-directional warp and I'm loading in an anisotropic noise. And I'm just cranking the intensity up. And for the parameters, um, I'm just using the balance, right? And then um, contrast. And then I should be able to find the noise parameters and the noise parameters I was just essentially doing X amount, right? So that's kind of controlling um, the, the spread in a, a direction or not, right? So I just kind of did this with like a larger shape. Um, and then I did the same thing up here, right? But in the opposite direction. So I just did that where um, instead I did, uh, I think I rotated it. There's like a rotation somewhere. I think I rotated one of these. I think it's probably this one. So it's going the opposite direction. So I just did two of them in the same, you know, this, this is just, again, just an anchor point layer. It has nothing in it, right? It's just a paint. I just need the mask so I can do anchor points. Um, and so then what I also did on these layers was I also added a blur directional, just kind of smudge it a bit. Did the same thing with this one up here, just added a blur directional to smudge it. Um, and then I just anchor pointed both of them. So I just grabbed the anchor point, I made an anchor point to both of those layers uh, or stacks of layers so that I can reference them up here in the bleed ink. So let's first look at normal ink. Normal ink is going to be pretty straightforward, right? It's just going to be um, this pattern with the breakup on top, so it's more irregular. That's cool. Um, and then the bleed ink is doing this, and it's not as successful as I thought it would be. Um, it, it's close. There's something there that I could do, but um, yeah, I just didn't, wasn't able to get um, the effect I wanted. Um, so essentially what I did here was, you can see, I just brought um, each of those directional blurs and screened them together. I could try playing around with something else, like maybe overlay, um, but that's fine. I blurred it a little bit just to soften it, and then I used like this messy fibers texture just to kind of, you know, not have it so perfect. And then I actually ate away some of the inside because I didn't want the text to darken so much, right? So you can see it's darkening a lot. Um, so I just ate away by subtracting the original text. And so that gave me something like that. So, you know, not super successful in my opinion, but um, it's something that you guys could um, try out and see if it's something that works for you. But anyways, hope this gave you some ideas of some cool stuff you guys can do with paper. Um, paper and ink and all those mark making things on flat surfaces can be really tricky because uh, your instinct is to go with just flat, just loading color. It's a piece of paper, it's flat. What could it, what, what's complicated the part there? Um, but you know, by, you know, paying a little bit more attention to how um, you're, um, you know, affecting the roughness, the height, um, and not just the color can really add some dimensionality to these surfaces and make them feel a little bit more believable.